Pretty good night of action, except for one match. I'm John Rentham with my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 30 Night 11 event with A Block action. A very explosive night of action given where they were, and like any of the uh, reviews that have been on before this, and until the finals, I'm going to have point totals at the end. No reason to have point totals at the end of the finals. What's the bloody point? We know who won the goddamn thing. And fair warning right now that if Jay White wins it, even though I kind of think he will, I'm going to have a rant about why I don't think that was the right idea. That will be at the end of the finals, of course. But anyway, this is a pretty fun night of action. There was one match involving Jay White that I didn't care for. Just spoil it right now. <laughs> so, Gabriel Kidd and Yota Tsuji with a fine young line match. Kidd got in some shots, but Yota... He in a running slam, nearly spiking himself on his head. Spear, and then the Boston Crab for the victory. Good stuff. Both these guys are going to be big stars. Uh, just sitting down on him for the Boston Crab, like, I mean, you know, sitting down on him a couple times. That was a pretty good way to do it. Tomohiro Ishii versus Yujiro Takahashi. Yujiro attacked at the bell and kept uh, targeting Ishii's neck. And he had a nice fisherman's buster, which Ishii really sold. I mean, I hope he wasn't actually hurt, because he's goddamn impressive, but fucking hell, like, he's really, really good at selling. Um, big superplex later by Ishii, and then a swinging slam, you know, out of Fireman's Carry for two by Yujiro, and then Vertical Drop Rainbuster 1, 2, 3. My issue with this match is it took twice as long as it should have for Ishii to beat the A-block punching bag Yujiro Takahashi. It's not that Yujiro's bad, he just should be there to get beat. I'm not saying the matches shouldn't be somewhat competitive, but you don't need to make long matches for the sake of them. Now, this wasn't a long event. If you take out... You take out the backstage comments, like, even if you watch that, it's like less than two and a half hours. You take intermission out. So, I get it. I'm just saying that sometimes matches don't need to go that long. And I still stand by the fact that Yoshihashi and Tetsuya Naito uh, from the previous event did not need to go as long as it did. That being said, not bad, but Ishii should have beaten him quicker. Jeff Cobb versus Okada. Jeff Cobb's strength is goddamn ridiculous. Got this shirt from him when I met him at an indie show about two years ago. Great guy, uh, and actually got to praise his match against Hiroki Goto at the G1 Cow Palace. If you get a chance to meet Jeff Cobb, fucking hell. If he comes to any of your indie events, if you get a chance to meet him, great guy. Really, great guy, and he's super impressive to watch. Okada had to play defense, and it's like, oh, he couldn't really put a dent in him. And anytime he did, Jeff Cobb would just pop right back up, you know, being a really good monster right there. And... Cobb just toying with him, doing, you know, the gut wrench stuff, and then catching him and just hitting, you know, that winding slam. I mean, good lord. It's like, it just, he, he was just fucking toying with him there. Now, Okada tried everything, but then got the trap pin. One, two, three. Okay. So, hey, he beat Suzuki the same way. Okada having to eke out some victories. He's got a bit of a dent in his armor, perhaps. Or, you know, maybe he's just, like, you know, getting overconfident. That may be entirely possible. Then intermission, Will Ospreay versus Minoru Suzuki. Minoru bumped his goddamn ass off while also torturing Ospreay, the aerial ass, which was a pretty damn good thing to see. It looked like he might have actually hurt him, though. Um, that was, I mean, and maybe not intentionally, but it looked like Ospreay might have gotten hurt. Um, karma. But anyway, this was, uh, it, or Ospreay's just that good at selling. It's really hard to tell with some of the, you know, some of the best. <clears throat> and lots of arm targeting, the strikes, the kicks. I thought Suzuki was going to win. I wanted him to win, but no. Nope. Stormbreaker, one, two, three. Will Ospreay staying pretty much near the top right there. Jay White versus Tai Chi. Stalling the musical, and once Gato interferes, the fun begins. If you're not going to do more original stuff or even try to tweak the goddamn formula, why the fuck are you even having these matches? And I love New Japan, but you can do formulaic stuff, but when it's just like, okay... We know Jay White's going to have Gato interfere. We know this is going to happen. Oh, look, it's the same shit we've seen before. And Jay White, I'm sorry, ain't exactly the superstar they think he should be. To me. I know there's some people who like Jay White, and that's fine if you do. I'm not going to knock you guys at all. But this did not work for me. When Tai Chi's motivated, he can do some great shit. This did not work. This just didn't. They hit some good moves. Then Gato kept interfering. Ref bump, and then eventually Blade Runner 1-2-3. There you go. Also, the heel versus heel thing is hard to do when the heels just don't give a shit. Now, that being said, it wasn't horrible, but it, it just it just wasn't something I liked. It, it just it just was it didn't work for me. It was just a match on the card. Uh, Shingo Takagi versus Kota Ibushi was good as expected. Uh, Shingo having to ground the high flying Kota with some good moves, some heavy strikes. Uh, then the moves spamming, and then we get the no selling and stuff like that. This was a show where really you know a couple of the matches stood out. And everything else is just kind of there. I would say three of the matches stood out. Cabo Kata, Osprey Suzuki, and this one. And the end result surprised me. I'm not going to lie. Um, 
you know, really good, uh, really good groundwork by uh, Shingo. Can't uh, say that enough. And then made in Japan for two. A lot of no selling with the moves. Big old two big pumping bombers. One to the back of the head, and then one to the. And Kota hates his own goddamn neck, and I don't know why. But Kota looked like he was going to get the victory. Couldn't get the Kamigoya, though. Last of the Dragons, one, two, three. Shingo Takagi beating last year's G1 Climax winner. That's a big goddamn deal. See, sometimes the upsets actually work. And they worked here. And then Shingo cuts a promo that I didn't understand because I don't understand Japanese. But now let's go to the point totals. Will Ospreay with eight. Yujiro Takahashi with zero. That makes sense. Jeff Cobb with four. Taichi with six. It looks like Tai Chi's momentum is pretty much stalled. I don't think he's going to get much more than maybe two other victories. And then we get uh, Tomohiro Ishii with six. Minoru Suzuki with six. Shinko Takagi with six. Jay White, Kazuchiko, Kata, and Kota Ibushi all with eight. So yeah, I, I think by night, the, by night 15 they really need to start some separating stuff here because otherwise it's going to be like, okay, now like we're going to have to pay attention. Like We're going to have to come up with a flow chart for all this stuff. But it makes for good drama. Let me know what you guys saw of the tournament in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rethlin. I'll see you soon.